Next item on the agenda is the executive message by Principal Chief Jeffrey Standing Bear. Good morning, Chief. Welcome morning. to the Chambers. Thank you, Madam Speaker, members of Congress. Um, just reviewing the report and the proclamation, and we have a few comments, not a lot, but um, I do think on the first one, uh, the um, FY 2016 Gaming Plan of Operations must be approved. Uh, the fiscal year 2016 is now two and a half months old because, as you know, it began October 1, 2015. This Congress uh, <coughs> has made some uh, new law uh, making the Gaming Plan of Operation a legally binding document. Uh, the law has caused problems, and I've asked our Supreme Court for guidance on that, as you know. And uh, I take it you all saw the certifications and questions that was issued Monday. Um, now, last September, despite all that, um, I, I pointed out that in the gaming uh, investment accounts, as they call it, we have uh, substantial amounts of funds uh, which we can access. And we all know that the law itself, in Bill 730, said that we can get 100% over to the nation treasury. And uh, it's just a matter of course or sort of unwritten custom that we agreed to this 40 million uh, or more um, annual amount from those accounts. And I'd encourage the Congress to consider paying off the $6 million uh, loan on the uh, Master Campus for some of that money. That does several things. It, it, it releases uh, approximately $1 million a year um, in funds available for appropriation that would otherwise be used for payments on that loan. And it also frees up the $31 million separate fund, we call a permanent fund, which as many of you recall, the loan itself has covenants which keep us from accessing that fund. So uh, yeah, I sponsored that permanent fund. I, I believe we need a permanent fund, but I don't think any of us ever intended for that fund to be um, tied up in a way it's been tied up. So we need to release that. And I also emphasize the importance of the new Tulsa Casino uh, project. Um, and you all and I have heard many reports from gaming about why that's important. And the present structure, I'm just going to repeat just for the public what you've all heard. The present structure is becoming old and dilapidated. Nevertheless, Tulsa Casino provides nearly 45% of our gaming revenue. Now, we are competing against the two new casinos, additions that have been opened recently and are opening in the Tulsa market. That of the Muskogee uh, Creek Nation and that of the Cherokee Nation. Uh, in the plan that you have before you is a casino and hotel project which costs $180 million less than a plan that was presented to this Congress uh, 18 months ago, and which many of you supported. Of course, I did not at the time. I thought that it was too extravagant. But we've been working to, to get that down to a, a manageable amount with the uh, experts that uh, know something about this stuff. Now, failure to go forward with the new casino, I've been convinced, is going to hold our revenues down. The present casino is in need of major surveillance upgrades. And NIGC requires certain standards, as does our own gaming commission. The present casino also needs a lot of maintenance and repairs. Because the Tulsa Casino and Hotel expansion would be built next to the existing casino, we can keep what we have now going 24 hours a day without interruption. But if we don't go forward with a new facility, we're going to have to spend millions of dollars on upgrades and repairs to the existing facility 
and will have to close down large sections of the existing casino while those are being done, which will drastically reduce our income. Now, as we move on quickly to the uh, other items, uh, 1528, uh, ONCA 1528, addressing the health benefit card. Assistant Chief and I were talking just before we went on to the uh, agenda here, and we're going to defer to the Congress. We do believe that it, that issue has been put off long enough. We have to grapple with that budget demand of either a two-year or three-year carryover. Uh, many of you I served with here in this, this chamber um, remember when we voted and how all that happened. I, I do think it's time to address it, and so I will support uh, however the Congress wishes to uh, best handle that. The uh, budget cutback amendments, which are listed from number three down through eight, I, I'm going to have to again oppose. Um, those, um, well, let me give you two main reasons for that <clears throat> in case you decide to pass it. I'm going to have to uh, submit a veto. detail. And the two main reasons you're going to see is that on Monday when our Supreme Court uh, certified those budget questions for review by the Supreme Court, um, we thought that it might be best, we still do, that we don't try to take any further actions until those questions are settled, actions on those budgets. Now, I don't know how the Supreme Court's going to move. And if you guys know, I don't know how you do. But I think none of us know. But if the Supreme Court strikes down those provisions that I uh, objected to, then we're going to have to come back and pass these. We're going to have to come back and unwind everything. And so I wonder what's the plan? It, it, I mean, it's before the Supreme Court work. I never saw a plan. I've been trying to read as much as I can that wasn't been published by the Congress in the last few days at least. I don't see a plan. So be advised, if you go forward, um, you may have to uh, may have been wanting the whole thing. The uh, other second reason I can tell you is uh, we all saw the uh, November 9, 2015 memo to the speaker and me uh, from the treasurer, Callie Ketcher. And she says that uh, this, these amounts that some of you may be relying upon, on the funds, um, it's not entirely clear due to the fact that, quote, current rate, close quote, is not defined in the act. And she advises due to the need for clarification. Um, we have requested the Attorney General opinion. And I think we should wait for some guidance from the Attorney General, at least, on uh, what we should do there. So you'll see uh, those are the two main reasons. Um, now, moving on, the uh, uh, Membership Act and Membership Regulations, uh, which you see the you know, I, you know, I can read the Constitution too, okay? And, uh, and so when it comes to this, and we've been talking about this quite a bit, uh, we urge uh, you to work with the executive on a solution to what we're calling an outrageous situation. No one in the Congress or the executive branch has the authority to speak on what this language means. That authority is reserved to our Supreme Court alone. I do not want to have to take this question to them if we can work on a solution to the problems. And the problems are immediate. I am holding up further burial assistance to these persons we believe were not descended from the 1906 OCA law. We have records of people employed who used Osage preference in employment which led them to jobs over those ages who were actually descended from 1906 law. I talked to one Osage person 
who sat as she was 16 votes short of being elected to this Congress. And she and I understand that the amount of people who we have investigated are more than enough to swing the past elections and the upcoming Congress election. We know that some of these people have received full scholarships of many thousands of dollars from the OSHP. They have used our health benefit card and have received any other benefits that are reserved for those Osages who can show they are descended from the 1906 Osage Rule. This Congress has known about these problems in this membership investigation at least since it was made public two months ago. I've had to act and I welcome any assistance from this Congress. In fact, it is your duty to enact laws and maintain a proper role to uh, say that the OCA Congress, though, is going to take over the membership department and delay people wrongfully using our money is wrong and I'm going to veto that. If you override that veto, I will have to guess the Supreme Court what to do. But I can tell you this, I'm not going to release any more money to these people. Um, I also, moving on, support the changes to the Competitive Bidding Act. I support the Village Reaffirmation Act. And by the way, let me just very quickly uh, say that uh, our police chief asked me yesterday if uh, uh, this meant that the villages had their own police departments. And I, I just can't see that. That would be up to this Congress. It's not the present law, it's yet again another. Uh, I told the police chief, I said there's one Osage Nation Police Department, and um, many years ago, my partners at the time and I represented most of the cities and towns in Osage County. Uh, Hominy, No Water, even, Order Cost City, Shiloh, a whole bunch of them. I can tell you, it's very expensive, as you should know, to run a police department. I just can't see any of these villages having the money to run a police department and their own court system, no matter how you vote. It's just, I just told uh, the police chief, I just don't see that happen. Uh, so uh, you got to watch out for false rumors and boogie loos. And uh, I can tell you that that made no sense to me. I, I can clearly support the way uh, the villages, the three villages, are heading. Uh, I believe there are problems which the Attorney General and I can't easily solve on the uh, dilapidated uh, uh, facility, or facilities, houses, properties, and the great cleanup. We need to pass nuisance laws and uh, find a way to provide proper notice to those holders of, uh, of those lots. And recall the uh, Bureau of Indian Affairs has regional office has issued a, uh, an opinion that uh, you can just forget about those CFRs. Uh, the Bureau has, since 2006, its constitution. These villages have been mentioned, and the Bureau recognizes this constitution. So they are looking to us to handle our own affairs. And uh, so I, I'm all for what the villages are trying to do. I'm um, also for the Osage Hazard Mitigation Plan, and um, I'm also, in general, uh, seeing if we can reach agreement on important actions without asking our Supreme Court for further guidance. 